Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, a week ago exactly, an unnamed saboteur of the Supreme Court leaked a draft opinion by Justice Sam Alito explaining why Roe v. Wade ought to be overturned. Now, people went completely hysterical over it, but actually, as a legal matter, Alito's views were not especially controversial. Roe is bad law. Over the past half century, many have acknowledged that, including many pro-choice Democrats, including Joe Biden. So at this point, 49 years in, if you're an office holder who supports legal abortion, the obvious solution is to vote for legal abortion. Pass a law like they do in democracies. It's not complicated. That's how it's supposed to work. But Democrats have no interest in that. Democracy is a tiresome process, and worst of all, the outcome isn't always guaranteed. They prefer what they call direct action, not democracy. So liberal activists immediately set about threatening Supreme Court justices and then attacking Christianity. A group called Ruth Sent Us, which is named in honor of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, posted the home addresses of every Supreme Court justice who is conservative. Why they do this? Well, of course, to invite violence and harassment, to get them to change their votes. Then Ruth Sent Us sent this to practicing Catholics across the country, quote, Stuff your rosaries and your weaponized prayer. We'll be burning the Eucharist to show our disgust for the abuse Catholic churches have condoned for centuries. Now, you'd think the Biden administration might have something to say about this. It was all public. Joe Biden purports to be a Catholic. Intimidating judges, by the way, is a federal crime. But no, the Biden administration did not try and stop this. The Justice Department did nothing. In fact, from her podium at the White House, the president's publicist endorsed the coming harassment very clearly. Quote, the president's view is that there's a lot of passion, a lot of fear, a lot of sadness for many, many people, Jen Psaki explained. So the message to Joe Biden's abortion militia could not have been clear. Go forth and terrorize. That's the word from the White House. So that's exactly what they did. Here's the mob this weekend outside Brett Kavanaugh's house. <laughs> Brett Kavanaugh is a Supreme Court justice, but he's also a man and a husband and a father, as you just saw. He lives in a pretty normal neighborhood outside D.C., doesn't have a wall around the house, and more to the point, his two daughters are home. So imagine what it must have been like inside the house if you're Brett Kavanaugh or, or his wife or his daughters. The people outside didn't care. The woman who organized that protest outside Kavanaugh's house lives right down the street, apparently. She's a deeply unhappy individual called Lacey Wooten Holloway. Wooten Hallway brought the mob to Kavanaugh's house for a very specific reason, not because she was angry, which she is, but because she wants Brett Kavanaugh to change his views and support Roe v. Wade. She was intimidating a federal judge. All of them were. And once again, that's a federal crime. It could not be clearer. And yet, Lacey Wooten Holloway, who bragged about organizing this, was not arrested. She wasn't even scolded. Instead, she was rewarded. Lacey Wooten Hallway got a glowing profile in The Washington Post. So once again, in effect, our leaders in Washington sent a very clear message to the mob, as they did for BLM. Do what you want. We're on your side. It's not like you're insurrectionists. So the mob did. Look what the mob did to this Christian counseling center in Wisconsin over the weekend. If abortions aren't safe, then you aren't either. That's just part of the message outside Wisconsin Family Action here, and it continues inside the building. What you're seeing around me right now, this isn't the answer to anything. Also written in debris and glass in her office, Wisconsin Family Action President Julian Appling says the message is clear. It's precipitated by the leaked Supreme Court opinion, right? I mean, it's obvious. Madison police say it appears someone threw a Molotov cocktail inside the building. You're not safe. Now, the Christian Counseling Center had nothing to do with Samuel Alito's opinion, of course. The Christian Counseling Center only talks to women who are pregnant and aren't sure what to do next. They don't make money doing it. They're not Planned Parenthood. They're not getting rich by giving gender-altering chemicals to your kids or committing abortion. No, they're just talking to girls who are confused and upset. Some of those girls wind up having abortions anyway, but the people at the Christian Counseling Center are trying their best to do their duty. They're not doing anything aggressive at all. But because their views are repugnant to the left, their building was firebombed. You're not safe, said the fire bombers. Apparently they aren't. So how did the media cover this? Well, here's Politico, which is not even a news organization anymore. Here's how they describe this firebombing. Quote, a fire broke out Sunday at the office of an anti-abortion group in Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, a fire broke out. Really? 
The Hill newspaper agreed, quote, fire breaks out at Wisconsin anti-abortion group office. Oh, just broke out. According to the police chief in Madison, where it happened, quote, the arson is not considered a terrorist incident. So firebombing with Molotov cocktails, for political reasons, threats left on the wall and spray paint, definitely not terrorism. Let's call it activism, because, you know, a fire broke out. So, of course, fires will continue to break out, if that's your posture, and they are, and more. Here's surveillance footage that we obtained of an attack on the Christian nonprofit Concerned Women for America that's based in Alexandria, Virginia, right across the river from Washington. You can see a man tearing the intercom from the wall, exposing himself, and a lot more. So this just happened over the weekend in response to Sam Alito's opinion, with which Concerned Women for America had nothing to do. They had no role in it whatsoever, but because they're Christians, they were attacked. The FBI has been notified. Have arrests been made? No, it's not September. It's not January 6th. No one stopped the person who did that. No one's arrested them. And no one has stopped the thugs who terrorized Sunday masses yesterday either across the country. This was a scene at a Sunday mass in Los Angeles. Respect us. Respect us. You want respect. 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 You guys want respect, we want respect too. Want respect. I, I understand that. Get out of here. Get out of here. I do. Just respect them. You know what? You, I understand. You you please yourself. I understand. We are with you. So, among other things, sincerely, the re religious people are a reviled minority at this point in the United States, and the Biden administration has made it its job, its self-described job, to protect unpopular minority groups. There's also, by the way, a federal law that makes intimidating churchgoers illegal. It's 18 U.S.C. 247, for the record. But the Biden administration has no interest in, particular, in protecting this particular reviled minority. They're ignoring the whole thing. That means that churches now need armed guards to protect themselves, but those guards are also now being targeted. Watch. Hey, you to take care of people. We pay you to take care of people. You're never doing it. You're never doing it. What are you gonna do? Shoot off shit to the world. That's not what they say. Shoot off shit to the world. 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 Shoot off shit to the Bartholomew Catholic Church in Katy, Texas, now reports that the tabernacle was just stolen last night, again, likely in response to the Alito opinion. And this was a scene outside the Basilica of St. Patrick's Old Cathedral in New York City on Saturday. Watch. I'm killing the baby. Could you get away with that outside any other religious center, any other group of worshipers? Probably not. We wouldn't support it. So maybe you're starting to think this isn't actually about Roe. Maybe it's about something more than that. Maybe it's about something much darker than that. Take a look at what Democrats are doing in Congress right now if you want a sense of what their plans are. This is a real passage from a new abortion bill the Democrats are trying to get through the Congress, and we're quoting. This act is intended to protect all people with the capacity for pregnancy, cisgender women, transgender men, non-binary individuals, those who identify with a different gender, and others. So there it is. It's not really about codifying Roe, abortions for people who, quote, need them safe, legal, and rare. It's about something much bigger than that. It's about displacing God as the great decider. Democrats now reserve the right to rewrite biology, which is to say, dominion over nature. Now they're in charge. So again, this isn't just about intimidating Supreme Court justices, five of them, into changing their views on Roe v. Wade. It's about attacking Christianity, because Christianity stands in their way. MSNBC just comes out and says it. Watch. 
the Christian right's decades-long push to revoke abortion rights is just part of their broader agenda. Well, what else? What else do they want? What else is at stake? This is not just about abortion. Uh, this is about a much broader uh, set of issues uh, that are have, have that really are about a kind of white Christian right worldview. It's very important for us to recognize that it is Christian extremism that is at the root of the shame and the stigma that allows laws like this to pass, that allows justices like this to be uh, confirmed. Discovered that they could manufacture and then channel their moral outrage toward abortion, creating a new litmus test for conservative politicians. References to God and Christian beliefs are often invoked in these political instances, with some saying outright that they believe America is a Christian nation. So they're mad not really just at Alito, but at Christianity and Christians, believers, people of faith. They have been for a long time, but it's weird if you think about it. Why are liberals angry at Christianity? You wouldn't think they would be. Christianity has been the single greatest force for human rights in history. In fact, the Western understanding of human rights, our understanding of human rights, all of us, atheists included, is based on Christianity. That's where it comes from. Christianity is the reason we don't have slavery and segregation and children working in factories. Christians did that. So if you're a sincere liberal, it would seem odd to hate Christians. But the totalitarians always do hate Christians. The Soviets killed the priests first. So did Mao. During the Spanish Civil War, the communists subjected a statue of Jesus to a symbolic execution in front of a firing squad. It was one of the first things they did within weeks of the war breaking out. Here's the picture on your screen. Shooting Jesus. It tells you everything. So modern liberals hate Christianity not because... It's repressive, but because they are. Any religion that puts God before government is by definition a threat to their power. Most offensive of all, Christianity specifically rejects their most cherished dogma, which is racial hierarchy. The Christian message is the opposite of the equity agenda. Christianity describes a universal brotherhood of man, every person created in God's image, and therefore, for that reason, morally equal. That is gravely disempowering for the left. If all people are morally equal, you can't really divide your population by skin color. You can't really set one group against another. You can't tell one group you're better than that group. You're worse than that group. That's not allowed. So in order to allow it, you have to erase Christianity. And they've been working on it for a long time. Ever notice how they call Martin Luther King doctor but not reverend? King was not a physician. He was a Christian preacher. They'd like you to forget that. Undermining Christianity is the central project of the left because it stands in their way. As dozens of churches burned across Canada last summer, the country's prime minister, Justin Trudeau, refused to condemn the fire bombings. He called them, quote, understandable. Then the head of Canada's ACLU effectively endorsed the fire bombings. Burn it all down, she wrote. And now we're seeing it happen here as we knew it would. 